Hi, I'm Shirley Jones, and this is Gemma Winger's Hollywood. Academy Award nominee for The Godfather, so that's probably what you're best known for. Boy, I'm pretty good, yeah. Yeah, and four-time Golden Globe Award nominee. Yeah, I never win anything. It's just like getting awards and no jobs. I'd rather get a job. They're going to give me a piece of glass. I, know, I, I know. can't eat You eat regular. Oh, nice. <laughs> God bless. Thank you. God bless you. You take care. How about a kiss goodbye? Adios. Hello, I'm Martin Landau. Hi, I'm Florence Henderson, and you're watching Jimma Winger's Hollywood. I'm Gemma Wenger, and you're watching Gemma Wenger's Hollywood, and I'm here on the red carpet at the International Christian Film and Music Festival. And I was so honored to be nominated for three official nominations for Beauty for Ashes, Gemma Wenger's Hollywood, as well as Best Television Host, and then my music video received official selection. So I'm definitely honored to be here. It's just a place that is really glorifying God, but there are so many Christians, there are so many people of faith who the minute they get in the secular realm, they are rejected because the world is going to reject the light. So this is a place where the light can be honored and exalted and that the people who are doing great things for God don't have to feel shunned and belittled, but instead they they can be acknowledged for the great things that they are doing. I have the beautiful and talented Brenda Ingram, and she has been nominated for Best Performing Artist. Tell us about your song and your video. Oh, well, okay, so on the song, they happened to lose my 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 tape, so I ended up singing it a cappella. That means you're really talented. God bless you, and you are prepared for anything. Well, I, the thing is, I got to preach pretty much because they were looking for it, and I said, "Hey, listen, you want me to keep talking? I can talk about Jesus till the cows come home." So God just kept giving me stuff to share. So I got about five minutes of telling people about what God can do in their lives, and that really, isn't it all about Him anyway? Not, it is. It's not about us. And the music video, I got to see yours. Yours. Was I didn't even know it was airing. I, nobody told me it was airing. Thank uh, you. I missed it. That's okay. It was awesome. Yours was awesome. Mine was awesome, even though I didn't get to see it because the files were corrupt. But you know what? It's all okay. God's got a plan. God does have a plan. You know, I've met so many awesome people like you that are first timers here. If you've never been to ICFF, you need to do it. There are people from all over. I mean, and it's really packed and crowded, don't you think? Um, people from the, the Washington State, Utah, from all over. And like you're, you're from California, a lot of people from LA. And so we've got- it's, This is gonna be the new Hollywood. Uh, Oh, well, this is a Hollywood Jesus Christ, anyway. That's right. These are the Academy Awards for Jesus. Yes. <laughs> that's a, it sounds that's awesome a, to me. Oh, I like that. I think that's a good idea, don't you? Uh -huh. I just interviewed Marty, the CEO, and I told him these are the Academy Awards for Jesus. Oh, it is. They have worked so hard. I've come for the last five years. They've done it for nine. So next year will be the big 10. And so it should be really good, really fun. I think they've got a lot of, you know, special things planned for the 10th. So. But I have further to drive than you do. Well, you get to fly. <laughs> okay. You? Did you drive? You didn't no, drive? No, okay. no. I was just being facetious, but it's more expensive to fly than to drive. Well, yeah. But God will provide, so if he wants me there, maybe I'll write a new song, produce a new video, and then I'll submit it, and we'll see what happens. Now, don't you have some other projects that are also nominated? I mean, I mean, you got nominated. This girl's got nominations. I want to introduce you to her. She's got nominations, and she's not even telling you about it. So you are so sweet. You are come so on. sweet. Come on, so, come on. okay. So I have two television shows. So they both got nominated. The official nominations for Gemma Winger's Hollywood and Beauty for Ashes. And then I got an official nomination for Best TV Show Host. And then my trust video got official selection. Everybody got to see it, though. So that's awesome. This girl rocks. Oh, 
I love you. I love you too. Love. Now tell me, we were talking yesterday about um, you have a testimony of how God healed you, that you're a singer by trade and you actually sang in bars and nightclubs and things like that. So you have a tremendous voice, but then the enemy came against your health. Yeah. No, actually what happened was um, I was a believer before I went into the nightclubs. I started singing professionally from 18 to 22. I shouldn't have been in the nightclubs. People didn't realize I was contemplating suicide because of the difference in walking with Jesus and walking in the bars. There's that scripture says, do not be misled, bad company corrupts good character. We become like who we hang around. And so um, I tried to get the pills three times, they never came, but when I thought about slicing my wrist, that's when the Lord intervened and I had throat surgery. And that's what took me out of the nightclubs. Now the, the group I was with, we had had an album back in those days, um, two weeks when I had my throat surgery. I moved back home, went back to the church and I rededicated my life to the Lord, went back to the surgeon, he said, okay, talk. And I said, what do you want me to say? And my left vocal cord had healed in three layers. And he said, I'm sorry to tell you, but you will never sing again. And, and, but that's what the Lord used to get me out of the nightclubs and back in my walk with him. So for a year and a half, I talked like I just did. And, um, but then my speaking voice got better. And, and then the Lord told me, he said, I want you to start telling people that you only have a 10 note range. And I want you to tell them two things for me. You tell them, I don't want their ability he doesn't he wants your availability you make yourself available he'll give you what you what he needs you know for you to have and the second thing I couldn't have thought that up on my own he said do not let the things you cannot do keep you from th the things you can so I I sing with the guys because I'm very I have a, a, a 10 notes but down with the guys have no sandy patty falsetto and um but with that i've done what i can do i have two cds i'm also a two-time breast cancer survivor that was really something hard to walk through because i was a stage one no node involvement tumor and the doctors i did a bilateral mastectomy with back reconstruction 11 and a half hours out of the hospital in two days doing great at my three-month checkup i already had a lump and they they said i was doing there was no nothing to worry about. I go back a year and a half later only to find out after all of that, really think about it, I was totally filleted front and back. They didn't remove the biopsy trail site and they dropped cancer cells on the way out. So my second tumor was the same tumor, my first tumor. My first tumor. So I went through seven surgeries in six years and people were saying, Brittany, you should write a book. And I go, uh, yeah, like I'm an author, which I'm not. But I got to thinking, if. If God can use a donkey to talk to Balaam, I gotta be better than a donkey. So I told the Lord, I said, if you want me to, I said, if you want me to write a book, then you'll have to give it to me. And he did in three weeks. And it's called, He's Looking at You, Kid, Chock Full of Scripture. Just For so much scripture. It's my biography. The second chapter is about the enemy, Satan, because a lot of people don't really know who he is or they don't believe in him. So uh, I had a pastor read the entire book. I said, I wanna make sure everything is scripturally sound. I said, so you look at it, and when he came back, I said, so what did you think? He said, he said I've never read an, a biography that is actually a teaching. And he said, because everything you have done in your life and has happened in your life, you give scripture. And at the end, I give them a chance to accept Christ, which is so easy to do, so easy. You don't wanna miss that. We're ready. Christ. Are you going to lead us? Oh, oh, you mean, oh, yeah. Oh, you want to know how to do it? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You know, it is, there, can I tell just a little story? Yes. Okay, there were two baby lambs born the same night. One baby was not accepted by its mama. The other baby passed away. So the shepherd, being very wise, he took the dead baby, the baby, the lamb that didn't make it, and he took the hide off that baby, put it over the baby that wasn't accepted by its mama, put it under the mama that had lost her baby. She sniffed and she, and she accepted that baby as hers. That's the way it is with the Lord. When God looks down, he doesn't see me. He doesn't see you. He sees the blood that Jesus shed covering us. And he goes, smells like Jesus must be mine. So Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father, and we get accepted by him and by his blood. 
Oh, that's beautiful. That's a story, that's a simple story. But it, it really shows that that's the way God is. Because, you know, and this is one, I'll call, this is one thing I love about Jesus. The price that he paid gives you a chance a second chance. No matter what you've done in life, it will give you a second chance on life. God wipes all the sin away. There is no more sin in your life. And he doesn't remember it. You might remember it, but he never does. Never to be brought up again. So it's through the blood of Jesus that we ask for forgiveness and we forgive others. You have to forgive others or he can't forgive you. That's a crucial thing. A lot of people hold on to that anger and that, that unforgiveness, but we have to forgive. And you have no idea how blessed you will feel. You don't even have to go to them to forgive them. You just have to forgive them in your heart, and then God will forgive you. I mean, it's just, everything is just so easy. And if you don't feel forgiveness, you kind of let go by faith that, yes. that you're willing, yes. and then God comes into your heart, and you're able to forgive, and you're able to love with His love yes. and His forgiveness. Yes. And what you couldn't do on your own, in your own power, you have the power of God working through you. And all of a sudden, you feel love for that person who betrayed you, who turned against you, who left you. So yes. praise God. So why don't you lead us in prayer? Oh, Heavenly Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, that name that is above every other name, Name, that Father God, everyone listening, Lord, if they need to hear anything that was shared today, Father, especially salvation, if they don't know you, Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit will even go through the airwaves and that they would feel that tug on their heart because they know that their life is empty because there is a vacuum in our lives until we accept Christ. And then it's all love all of his love will come flooding into you and then he will help you walk that walk so i pray in jesus name that if you don't know him that even right now you will ask him to come into your heart dear jesus just say this dear jesus i acknowledge that you are my savior and my lord you came to give me a second chance on life and i'm giving my life to you use me as you want to i'm all yours amen Amen. Amen. That's beautiful. Let me pray for you right oh. now. Oh, God, I just thank you, Lord, for Brenda, Father God, that you have even used that illness to bring her closer to you. That, Father God, she has a message. She has a testimony of the healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ. But most of all, her heart, her heart is seeking hard after you, that she is following hard after you, that she has a message for those who are suffering, for those who are hurting, for those who are despondent, disappointed, frustrated. Father God, oh Jesus, I thank you, Lord, that you are the healer. You're the God who heals Brenda. And I thank you, Lord, right now. We curse every work of darkness. We rebuke every spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus. You are healed. You are washed. You are cleansed. And that cancer will never come back in Jesus' name. We rebuke all fear. We rebuke all worry. And we thank Thank you, Lord, that hallelujah, you said greater works than you did are we going to do because you go to the Father and you healed incurable diseases. You healed leprosy and you're yes. touching Brenda right now and you're ministering to her, Father God, that she has overcome that illness with faith, with thanksgiving, with gratitude, with hope, and just knowing that you are true to your word, that you will do what you have promised. So I thank Thank you, Lord, for Brenda. I thank you for her joy and the light in her eyes, that it's the light of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father God, just be with her and bless her. Touch her voice right now. Restore her voice so that she will sing again. Father God, the doctor says no, but you're Dr. Jesus, and you made those vocal cords, and in Jesus' name, we command those cords, hallelujah, to line up with the Word of God, and the Word of God says you are healed 
We speak resurrection power, resurrection life. Father God, you give life to the dead, and those dead vocal cords are going to come alive again. In Jesus' name we pray. We break that yoke. I see a breaking of that yoke that has you bound. And Lord, this one's going to soar like an eagle. This one's going to sing again for your glory and your honor and your praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You know, I, I, I have been able to sing. So I've had a ministry since the 80s. So I've been ministering, uh, singing, and talking, sharing. Are you going to sing your song for us? A little bit of it. Oh, you mean like acapella like I did in there? (laughs) So you were in it after all. All of those moments I spent crying. When something inside of me was dying, I didn't know that you heard me each time I called. You had a reason for those trials. It seems I grew stronger every mile. Now that I know you were in it after all. We're always ready, Lord, to take the glory. Oh, but we're seldom willing to endure the pain. You were with me when the sun was shining. And you were still beside me when it rained. So you were in it after all. Taking the blows that I'd been given, mending the wounds that needed mending. I didn't know that you heard me each time I called. I guess it's easy now to see. I don't know how I could have missed it, Jesus. But you were in it after all. Now I know you were in it after all. Lord, you were in it. You were in it after all. I'm so thankful you were in it after all. Oh, thank you for letting me sing that. I tried to sing that last night, and that it didn't go that well. <laughs> this went really well. It was beautiful. Oh, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. God gave me an acronym for the word hope for anybody that is entangled in pain or of any kind. I, I went through a horrible divorce and I kept quoting Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, Plan, uh, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in a future. And you know, the words we speak, speak forth life, right? And I just kept claiming that and saying it loud and loud and loud. And one day I just broke and I, I was crying and I said, I don't see any hope and I don't see any future. I don't know what you might be going through, but you might be feeling the same exact way. I don't see any hope. I don't see any future. This is what God spoke to me. He said, that's because you're looking in your flesh. You need to look to Jesus. Jesus is your hope. And he gave me an acronym for the word hope. Healer of pain's entanglement, because Jesus is the only one that come can come and break us free from that, and so He's our hope. He is our hope, and I'm so happy that He brought you back to Him, whatever yes. it took. The anointing is on your voice, and He's going to expand your range more and more. He's going to work that miracle. But you have such a beautiful tone; it's just, it's just gorgeous. How can they get in touch with you? Well, um, my web. I have a new website, but someone took my name, so I, I, it's now www.brenda-ingram.com. Uh, on Facebook, I'm Brenda Turner Ingram. I also have a casting group, if any of you are actors or whatever, um, on ca- and it's just called Casting Group, and it's on Facebook. 
too. So, and then I have an Instagram, Brenda Ingram. And where can they buy your book? Uh, they can uh, they can go online and buy it for me, and I'll send it to them. It's chock full of scripture. If you need, and I will tell you, I had a brother that that was living the the gay lifestyle, and uh, God totally delivered him from that. He had a Saul on the road to Damascus experience, and God is in the, he's such a loving God that it, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't matter if you've killed someone, doesn't matter what sin he loves you. And he wants to bring you home because he wants to bring everybody home to be with him in heaven. I have Joseph Stam and he's been nominated for best Actor in the movie Found. Tell us about it. Um, well, it follows the story of a uh, innocent kid who grows up on a mountain away from society, and he has to. Uh, he lives with his grandmother, and uh, when she dies, uh, he has to kind of go into society and uh, find his way around the new world um, since she kind of kept him sheltered from everything. So he goes and lives with his family and they teach him things, he teaches them things and um, then things escalate when his biological mother shows up uh, and they don't know why she just showed up and he's gotten really close to this family. So I don't want to spoil too much, but that's my little... Spoiler alert, yeah. spoiler alert. So what is the message of this film? Um, well, it's based on James 1 about uh, going through trials with perseverance and endurance. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's really the, the message of it and uh, how God will stay with you through it all and how you should uh, just keep following him even when you don't want to and but you you know you should how did you get the role well um, I'm actually very close friends with the director of the film David Alford and he was very generous and actually let me help write some of it and uh, then I got he ended up casting me in it so it was really cool to see the whole film from first draft to the final product all the way through. It was a really cool experience. That is. So you're an actor? Yes, I'm uh, an actor. I've been starting to do some screenplays as well, trying to dip my toes into that. And I did a uh, just a little three-minute short film uh, for directing. So I'm trying to figure that out as well. I'd, I like attacking it from all creative sides. It's a, It's a lot of fun. That's really great. And this is the International Christian Film and Music Festival. So how does faith play a role in your life? Well, um, I mean, God has just been directing me um, and everything I do and all the projects I've been lucky to be a part of. Um, there, there's just no way that I would have been a part of it or there's no way that these projects would have been made if it wasn't for God's provision and God's leading uh, a lot of different people and a lot of different situations to turn out for good. So, um, yeah, it's been wild. Even while we were shooting, found so we had so many problems come up and every time that we had a problem, uh, God gave us a much better solution that was way better than anything we could have imagined. So that just kept happening. Uh, the director, David Alford, he actually kept saying, I, I'm kind of looking for problems now because every time there's a problem, God brings something better that we never could have imagined. So <laughs> That's really great. I mean, that's fantastic to hear that because of the problem, something better came your way that you wouldn't have done in the first place had there not been a problem. Yes, exactly. There was, uh, we even lost a location the day before we were supposed to shoot there. Um, and uh, we prayed about it, and five minutes later, we had a ten times better location. Uh, it was just, things like that just kept happening, and you just kind of had to sit back and say, okay, God, just, we'll go where you lead. <laughs> That's a beautiful testimony. So were you excited about being nominated? Yes, I uh, was not expecting it at all. It was kind of uh, definitely a shock. I didn't actually believe it for a long time. I kept kind of refreshing the page thinking, <laughs> okay, it was just like a typo, you know, that it's, it's going to... Uh, is that my name? <laughs> yeah, is, is that my name? Well, check my birth certificate just to make sure. I don't know. Um, no, it was wild. Uh, I was just, How does it make you feel? I mean, I'm just... Uh, 
I'm just grateful and I'm honored um, because uh, just I, I I still don't know how to feel. I was it was very blindsiding. So um, I'm just really thankful. And honestly, every person who worked on the film made my performance what it was because everyone has so much passion for this project. It was such a tight knit of people and everyone worked so very hard and it was a joy every time we were on set because everyone was just focused on making the scene that we were doing the best it could possibly be and that was the only focus every time. It, we, we shot the thing in two or two and a half weeks which is insane for a feature film. I don't recommend doing that but it was actually fun. I, I don't recommend doing it unless Every, everyone you're working with, you love because uh, it was a really cool experience and one. It helps you to really live the character, that's for sure. Oh yeah, definitely. I actually did live the character a little bit because um, he grew up away from society without technology, without running water, without anything. So I actually uh, spent some days in the woods, uh, out and you know camping out, just kind of trying to learn how he lives, setting traps, you know, uh, for animals. Uh, I started writing his journal um, because that he, d he doesn't have many people to talk to. So uh, that's a good way to get out all of his unfiltered thoughts out on a page. And um, once I found that, anytime I was stuck or anything with the character, I could just go back to that journal and I'd be like, yeah, there he is. What advice can you give to aspiring actors, writers, directors, filmmakers? What has helped you the most? It sounds like you have a lot of mentors. Yes, definitely. David Alford, uh, the director and writer of the film, he's, an in, he's, he's amazing. He's an amazing mentor. And uh, he's been doing theater and film for so long now. And he's just taught me so much. So... Um, I don't know. I, I, the, main, the main thing is just to find something authentic. And uh, you, you have to find something interesting sometimes. But uh, if you're authentic, it, I, I think that's the most important part of it. You mean you feel it, you believe it, you live it. Like the audience really thinks that you're that person. Right. You can't, you can't think I'm acting in this scene. You just have to live in the moment with the people and with the other characters. And um, acting is all about listening and all about uh, paying attention to other people. And they will do the same for you. And uh, that's where chemistry happens. And that's where acting happens. That's where you get natural reactions. That's where... Uh, that's where the fun stuff happens. That's where those moments happen because you're fully present and that's that's good and everything we need to be fully present. Yeah definitely and I think um, watching other actors process I've done that so much and just researched other actors process and some things they do will work for me some won't so I'll you know, pick and choose what, what works for me and throw out the stuff that doesn't. So uh, it's very, it just depends on the person. One thing that works for one person isn't going to work for another person. But you just kind of have to test it out and find your own process.